All right, Shalom. First and foremost, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakha All right, um, well, let me translate that. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham is the name. Ba'in Hadasham name. Yahweh Shai is the name of the begotten Son. And Rakha Kwadash means Holy Spirit, literally translated Spirit Holy. Rakha Spirit. Quadash holy. And um but yeah, double honest to the apostle of great millstone and south brothers doing this thing in sincerity and truth and with charity. I'm happy right into you know a brother had um he asked the question about the Ezekiel 16, 3 and 4. You know, he asked um about a video on it, so through the spirit, you know, I'm gonna touch on it. Go into the, the breakdown, which it's um simple enough, you know, plain enough. Don't know how much the chapter I'm gonna go through, but I know he specifically asks about three through four, so I want to touch on that. This is Ezekiel sixteen and one. Again, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, "Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations, and say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan." Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother an Hittite. Now we know that these are Hamite nations right here that's been mentioned. And Israel come through the seed of Shem. So obviously this is not a physical, literal thing. Alright? And as for thy nativity, and the day that thou was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou not washed and watered to supple thee, thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. None I pity thee to do any of these things to do any of these unto thee to have compassion upon thee, but thou was cast out in the open fields to the loading of thy person and the day that thou was born. So let's grab this word for nativity and birth. Let's grab birth first. All right, which is mak 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 <laughs> Mako Wara, Mako Wara, Mako Ra, Mako Ra, Mako Wara, Mako Wara. But it means origin. All right, it means origin and even habitation. All right, our habitation is what? Our land. All right, let's get nativity, which is Ma Mawalad. Ma Mawaladath. Mawaladath. Mawalad. Mawaladath. Mawaladath. But it uh, means kindred, birth, offspring, relatives. Kindred, birth, circumstances of birth, one born, begotten, issue, offspring, female, offspring. Here we go. By, by implication, no, no, that's not the, there. This is it. Native country. Native country. Okay? So our origin, our native country. All right? Thy birth, thy nativity, thy origin, our native country is of the land of Canaan. All right? And what does that mean? Well,. <laughs> The land that we inherited is the, the land of Canaan, Deuteronomy 7 and 1. When Yahweh thy power shall bring thee into the land where thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when Yahweh thy power shall live with them before thee, thou shalt smite them, utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. All right, so the land that we was going to possess is the land of Canaan, per the promise. All right, per the promise to Abraham in Genesis, the 15th chapter, which also is going to touch on Abraham being referred to, just want to double check. Oh, 
or to say uh, your father, thy father was an Amorite and thy mother Hittite, which we know Abraham comes through Shem. So why is this saying that? Well, let's get this Genesis 15. And we had a couple precepts, but let, we're going to start here since we already touched on a possession. So this is Genesis 15 and 12. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abr Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them. They shall afflict them four hundred years, which happened in the land of Egypt. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and after they shall come out with great substance. Again, Egypt. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. And this is going into um, that verse 4. We didn't, and verse 5, we didn't get pity. We, get, we went to slavery, man. We grew in numbers and became a, a, a nation. We was in slavery. And a lot of Jake was, was in that blood. They were serving idols, man. A lot of Jake was serving the idols of Egypt, man. Still in that blood. All right. Um, Fifteen, Shalaki. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. Be in the fourth generation, Shalaki. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. So we know that... The, this is talking about the land of Canaan, but right here it refers to the whole land of Canaan as, you know, as the Amorites. It's like we refer to Israel as Judah sometimes. All right. This is. um. From the blue letter on Amorite. I'm a warrior. I'm, I'm a warrior. It says Amorite collect Amorites, a nation of Canaan, and apparently the greatest. All right, this is where I'm at, and most powerful of them all, and whose name is sometimes used in a wider sense, so as to include all the nations of Canaan. So sometimes it's just saying Amorite as another way of saying Canaanites. Okay? And they use the Genesis 15, 16 as, as a, a reference. Nevertheless, the actual land of the Amorites would get taken too. We read in Genesis, I mean, uh, Deuteronomy 7. So that, that, that whole land, man, became ours. The land of Canaan is our land. All right? And this also was where Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan. And it came to pass when the sun went down. And it was dark, behold, a smoke and furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. And the same day, Yahweh made a covenant with Abram, saying unto thy seed, have I given this land? What land? This land of Canaan. Now, you know what's talking about? The whole land of Canaan, not just the land of the Amorites. From the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river of Euphrates. The Kenites and the Kenizzites and the Kadamites and the Hittites and the Perizzites. And the, the, the Rephims, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. It just wasn't time because the Amorites, all right, a.k.a. the Canaanites, did not fulfill their iniquity yet. They had to reach their height of sin to get their judgment. All right, but this lets you know that Amorite is just another way of saying Canaan. All right. Now let's go to Genesis
Did it say Hittite's in that verse? Yeah, okay, yeah, it said it right there, so that's cool. Let's go to Genesis 13. You know, let's, uh, come on. This is going to piss me off. There we go. Let's go to this first. This is Joshua 24 and verse... Two. And Joshua said unto all the people, thus said the hollow power of Israel, your father's door on the other side of the flood in, in old time, even to Ra, the father of Abraham and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. All right. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him through all the land of Canaan. It multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. So our forefather dwelt in the land of Canaan. He, he multiplied his seed there. And I gave unto Isaac, Jacob, and Esau, and gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess it. Okay? So Abram dwelt amongst the Canaanites. This is Genesis 13. Uh, I get to the point. <laughs> uh, did not. Damn, I'm gonna just. I'll read this then bouncing around. It's all to the spirits. All the point. This is Genesis 13, five and lot all. Five, and Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents, and the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell there, dwell together, for their substance was great, so they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle, and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt then in the land. So this is where they was living at. All right, and Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee. And between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou would take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and behold, and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before Yahweh destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of Yahweh, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest into Zoar. Then Lot chose them all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan. And Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. Okay. I'm gonna just keep going. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before Yahweh exceedingly. And Yahweh said unto Abram, after that, after that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art northward and southward, and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest to, seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Our origin, all right, our origin, let, let me pull it up again. I'm going to pull up nativity because origin is for birth. In nativity, it says what? Native country. Our origin, our native country is Canaan. That's our land. The Canaanites just had it first because we wasn't a nation yet. So they were there. Simple. Back in Genesis 13, 15. For all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. 
Arise, walk through the land of the length of it and of the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram moved his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. Now, who, uh, um, who was the man Mamre? All right. Who was the man Mamre? Well, let's just, I believe it was in the next chapter. Genesis 14, 13. There came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew. He dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Ashal and brother of Aner, and these were confederate with Abram. So Abram even had, you know, he had Canaanites that he was cool with at this time. All right, but I just wanted to show that he was around actual Canaanites, actual Amorites. Now let's grab something for the Hittites, right? Because there was an actual... Oh, just going to... All right, there was an actual um place called Mamre as well. Which is really close to the Hittites. And Abram dwelled there. And of course his wife and he bought land there. Oh, well, this is the first pop up. I hit this. This is Genesis 23. Oh, yeah. Time. Genesis 23. Um, we just saw her bond somewhere else. We know it wasn't called Hebron yet. But this is Genesis 23 and uh, 1. And Sarah was 107 and 20 years old. These were the years of the life of Sarah. Contacting phone you looking for. The other damn phone. I ain't say Siri. And Sarah was 107 and 20 years old. These were the years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah died in Kerjeth Arba. The same is Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abram came to Mount to mourn for Sarah Tweet for her. So let's let's do this. Our Yath. Our 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 Rabbi. Our Rabbi. City of Arba. Come on. All right. But it said the same as Hebron, which Hebron, it was not called that yet because it wasn't taken over. I just wanted to see if it's going to say anything else. If it belonged to the Amorites. No, no. It's going to tell me in this chapter. It was the Heth, the Hittites. 
the uh, uh, verse three. And Abram stood up from before his dead and spake unto the sons of Heth, saying, And Heth is the same as Hittite. In Genesis the tenth chapter, list the sons of Canaan. Where no sons is Heth, and that's the Hittites. I am a stranger and a sojourner with you. Give me a possession of a burying place with you, that I may bury my dead out of my sight. And the children of Heth answered Abram, Abraham, saying unto him, Here is my Lord, thou art a mighty prince among us. And the choice of our sepulchre is buried thy dead. None of us shall withhold from thee his sepulchre, but that thou mayest bury thy dead. And Abram stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, even to the children of Heth. And he communed with them, saying, If it be your mind that I should bury my dead out of my sight, hear me and entreat me for and entreat for me to Ephraim, the son of Zohar, that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he hath, which is which is in the end of his field, for as much money as it is worth, he shall give it me for a possession of a burying place amongst you. And Ephraim dwelt among the children of Heth, and Ephraim the Hittite, let you know that Heth and Hittites are the same, answered Abraham in the audience of the children of Heth, even of all that went, went in at the gate of his city, saying, Nay, my Lord, hear me, the field I give thee, and the cave that is therein I give it thee, in the presence of the sons of my people give I it thee, bury thy dead. So Abraham, our forefather Abraham just wanted the cave, right? He gave him the cave and the land. All right. And Abraham bowed down himself before the people of the land. And he spake unto Ephraim and the audience of the people of the land, saying, But if thou wilt give it, I pray thee, hear me, I will give thee money for the field. Take it of me, and I will bury my dead there. And they went back and forth. <laughs> Ephraim didn't want to take it. Abraham insisted. And um, it, it ended up happening. Verse 17. And the field of Ephron, which was in Machpelah, which, which was before Mamre, the field and the cave which was therein, and all the trees that were in the field, that were in all the borders round about, were made sure unto Abraham for a possession in the presence of the children of Heth, before all that went in at the gate of his city. And after this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field, of Machpelah before Mamre, the same as Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And the field and the cave that is therein were made assured, were made sure unto Abraham for a possession of a burying place by the sons of Heth, the Hittites. All right, so of course, if Abraham is dwelling there, our, our mother, Sarah, is dwelling there. Thy mother is a Hittite. Okay? Furthermore, because the scripture is manifold, our mother being a Hittite goes into Galatians 4. And 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. So the land Jerusalem, you know, who which is who we are, that's the motherland. But that land was also was referred to as what before the land of Canaan. So that's our nativity. Our land once belonged to the Canaanites, the heathens. Meanwhile, while we was growing and growing and, and you know in numbers and becoming a nation, was it was it another one of Genesis? Right, yeah. Um, while we was growing in numbers, as a nation, we had heathens in our land. The foul in our land. All right, which is why they got kicked out. They got spewed out for it. All right. But even before that, our forefather Abraham and our mother dwelt in this land. They dwelt in the land of Canaan. All right, the land of the Amorites. And as we just read, they dwelt in the land of the Hittites. 
And when you hey, just like Paul was called a Roman because he was dwelling there, he was a citizen there. It's the same thing with Abraham, right? We have another similar example with our forefather Jacob. In Deuteronomy. Twenty six. In verse five, and thou shalt speak and say before you, how thy power? A Syrian ready to perish was my father. And he went down into Egypt and sojourned there with a the few and became there a nation great, mighty and populous. And the Egyptians evil and treated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. And we know who this is talking about. Clearly, this is talking about our forefather, Jacob. Okay, because we know this, the history of what happened. They went into Egypt, of course, the growing numbers, slavery, etc. All right, but he was called a Syrian because he dwelt with the Syrians. All right, he dwelt with Laban. Just... Just to prove it. Genesis 25, 20. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebecca to wife. The daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padanaram. The sister to Laban, the Syrian. Twenty-eight, twenty-five. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went unto Padanaram unto Laban, the son of Bethuel the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob, and Esau's mother. All right, and you, we, we, we know the history. You know he dwelt. And works for LeBron, so he was in the land of Syria, okay? All right. So, yeah, he was referred to as Syrian now. And again... What happened? The Egyptians treated us evil. All right. They gave us no pity while we grew in numbers and became a nation. Going back to this Joshua 24 and 3. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied the seed and gave him Isaac. And I gave unto Isaac, Jacob and Esau. And I gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess it. So Esau got his possession right away, right? But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. And we know what happened in Egypt. I sent Moses also and Aaron, and I played Egypt according to that which I did among them. And afterward, I brought you out. So lock your bear with me. And I, bought, and I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and he came into the sea. And the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen into the Red Sea. And when they cried unto Yahweh, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt. And ye dwelt in the wilderness a long season. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites. Which dwelt on the other side of Jordan. And they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand that you might possess their land, and I destroyed them from before you. I'm just keep going, right? Here, yeah, this is all going to it. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose. And warred against Israel and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not hearken unto Balaam, therefore he blessed you still. So I deliver you out of his hand. And you went over Jordan and came unto Jericho. 
and the men of Jericho fought against you, the Amorites and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Gargashites, <coughs> and the, Hiv the Hivites, like it, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And I delivered them into your hand. And I sent the horn before you, which drave them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow. And I have given you a land for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye built not, and ye dwell in them of the vineyards and olive yards, which ye planted, and olive yards which ye planted not, do ye eat. Now therefore fear your how and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye Yahweh. And if it seem evil unto you to serve Yahweh, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. That our, that's the, our, our land. It belonged to the Amorites. The Canaanites, a.k.a. the Amorites. But as for me and my house, we will serve Yahweh. All right? So let's see. Yeah, you know, and, and that's really the point because that's the brother asked about. Yeah. <laughs> and the rest of the chapter goes into the Lord, you know, taking us and raising us to be a nation. He's delivered us. And then as the scriptures say, just around wax fat and kick. So Israel went off. Started serving the idols of Egypt and Canaan again. It was in that blood. And the Lord was, you know, brought his judgment. All right. But yeah, that was the point, man. You know, there's no way we can be Hamites and Shem 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 Shemites at the same time. All right. This is going into the land and where our forefather dwelt. And um, also, you know, another layer to it is the fact that Jake was serving idols, man. Jake was into wickedness. And the Lord still came and saved us out of Egypt and took away those idols of Egypt, those idols of Canaan, man. He cleaned that blood off of us. Okay, and comfort us and strengthen us. Um, but I believe I'll leave it at that. I think I'll leave it at that. That's 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 the point right there. Over is edifying all praises, honor, and glory too. Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shab Bahasham, Kakorash. Double honor to the apostle as great millstone. And shout out to your brothers doing this thing in sincerity and truth and with charity. Shalom, Baba Baal.